There's a process called living in the end that I began to apply. It's an idea from Neville Goddard, who is an old school law of attraction teacher. And since I've been applying it, so much in my life has changed. I'd go as far as to say is this house is here because of the living in the end technique. Um, me doing what I love is because of that process. Even I had the realization that when I traveled for three months, that that came as a result from this technique called living in the end. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply it and how it can change your life. Welcome back to another video. My name's Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you why living in the end is one of the best, most powerful law of attraction techniques that I've ever found. And the main reason I say that is because from experience, that's been the one that's got me the best results. I used to, first off, I learned about this from Neville Goddard, who's an old school law of attraction teacher, very powerful work. Dr. Wayne Dyer, who would talk about his book, The Feeling is the Secret, which is something I've also been doing. Feeling, it, feeling is the Secret is about understanding the 30 minute window as you're falling asleep at night and as you wake up in the morning. And if you feel the emotions of what you want to experience, you impress that upon your subconscious mind, and then that comes into your reality. So I was doing that when I was working at Nordstrom selling women's shoes at Barney's New York selling women's shoes and then I did that so that I could then become a full-time youtuber I've used it in so many different ways now this idea of living in the end has to do with understanding that the more we can feel gratitude or be in the emotions of a potential that hasn't happened already, the more we open up the field of possibility of making that a probability. Now I know that sounds probably pretty deep, <laughs> the wording of it, but think of it like gratitude unifies you with infinite intelligence, and when you're feeling the emotion of living in the end, you close your eyes, your mind doesn't know the difference between what it's thinking about, what it's actually experiencing. It then begins to pull from those probabilities and you begin to experience synchronicity in your life, opportunities in your life in a very powerful way. And one of the ways I, I, I use this before I even got into this house is first off, this is the house that I will be living in for the next year in case you haven't seen it yet. I know I've had some YouTube videos go out. Also, this is a whole other story in of itself, but all of these crystal pieces I just got also using living in the end, including this one right over here. This one's kind of cool. So I have uh, just literally got them yesterday, so I'm kind of excited about them. And I gotta find places for some of them, but I got a whole bunch of amethyst. Uh, what I did in the, the process of doing this, it has to do with understanding that the more you get to your core and the more that you feel and you imagine these things, the more that you then align with it. So one of the things that happened is this house right here, when I was, intending to move in, I was coming out of traveling for three months and I came back in December, like the middle of December, it was like December 15th when I got back and I wanted to get into a new place. I was, I love traveling, but I realized that I need a home base. I need somewhere where it's on my own energy because going in Airbnbs, I would always be in a new place. I'd have to clear the energy. It was like, um, by the time I got settled in somewhere, I was already moving on to the next place. So. I was eager to get into a new place when I got back. And I got back December 15th-ish. I ended up getting to an Airbnb at a place here in Vegas called Palms Place, which is like a little condo place. I was there for two or three weeks and I was looking for a house, looking for a house. There was only about 10 houses on the rental market that were what I would want to live in. The I wanted a, a house that was um, closer to the airport, that was also something that it was a big, it was a nice big space that I could do if I ever wanted to do mastermind retreats or stuff like that. And when I was looking, there was only, there was not that many options at all. I found this house and I immediately saw the pictures and there was just something about it. I was like, wow, this house is really cool. Even the numerology of the house I liked. And then what happened is I saw some other houses, didn't really find anything I liked, saw this house, immediately knew that this was the house. I just felt it. Then what happened is the owner, uh, not the owner, the property management company, they said, oh, the guy that's currently living here who's also, he's, uh, he's somebody that he was living here. He's a real nice guy. He's a magician on the strip in Vegas, here in Vegas. They told me, oh, he, he doesn't, he's not gonna be out till February 3rd. It's like December 21st or something like that. I'm like, so I gotta wait a month and a half? I was like, why do you put the property on MLS or you know, for people to, to look at if it's a month and a half until we can get, but that's what they did. So 
I said, you know what, I like the house so much, I'm willing to wait even if I have to get like an Airbnb or stay in that condo, which wasn't that preferable. And then what I did is I said, you know what, here's what I'm gonna do. Every single night I went to bed, this is what I did. I imagined that I was laying in my bed, I closed my eyes, I imagined that I was in this house because I already actually walked through this house. And let me show you. Originally, I came to this house and I knew, like, I, I walked through it and this uh, room right over here was where they had the master, like, part of the master bedroom. So right now this is where my sauna goes and my biohacking stuff. There was a big bed right here. But from walking through their house, what I did is I imagined myself as every morning, like, as sleeping on the bed, I imagined that I was here and I felt the gratitude for being in this house where it's my own energy, being able to have things like the crystals to me are just symbols, they amplify energy. And I like being able to have a crystal grid around my house and to put my own energy into my house. So that was another part of my vision. However, I imagined me sleeping there, me getting up in the morning, if like I got up in the morning, instead of just getting up real quick, I would just imagine that I was, I'd like remember once I woke up, oh yeah, what is it like at that house? And I would imagine that I was there. And as I just simply trusted and knew, I just trusted that things would happen the way they were meant to happen, but I kept strong to that vision, the living in the end, living in the end, being it now. And when I did that, guess what happened? Well, they said February 3rd or February 4th was gonna be when I could move in. The uh, guy that lived here, he said, okay, he saw that I wanted to come get in too. He said, you know what, I'll make it, I'm gonna do this for you. I'm gonna get out in the next week. This is back in like December, you know, the last week of December. He said, I'll be out by the 1st of January. So from the living in the end technique, within four or five days, I got told, hey, you can move in a month earlier. Actually, then what happened is they said, no, you can't move. Um, they said, okay, yes, we're gonna get you in sooner. Property management said, oh, you know, it's gonna take us a week or two to get the house ready. We gotta clean the house. We gotta get inspections on the house, all this stuff between tenants. And I said, same thing. I visualized, I lived in the end, and I focused on that. And guess what happened? I ended up connecting to the owner of the house, which property management company doesn't want you to do, but I ended up um, talking to him, and he ended up really liking me, and we ended up really vibing. And what happened is, is even though they said, no, you have to wait two weeks till inspection's done, he said, you know what, I own the house, give him the keys now. And I ended up moving in, even though the house wasn't completely clean, I was able to move in, and then I had the house clean like the next day, but I was able to move in like a day later, it was crazy. And it came from this living in the end principle that I'm talking about. And I used this even when I was working that nine to five job to then do what I do now. I imagined getting up every day. I imagined being able to uh, get up every day, do what I want, when I want to do it, not being told what to do. I imagined being excited to make videos and I would visualize it as if that were me now and that was the emotions I was feeling and that was my reality. And that's what living in the end is. Living in the end is realizing let me see if I have a, I think I do, a, right here. Um, living in the end is about understanding that there's this version of you that thinks, feels, and acts a certain way, and then there's the version of you that feels abundant, love, and the key to this is just deciding to feel these emotions now, to feel this way now, and the way that you do that is you first just have to believe that you can do it, whatever your vision is. Look at your vision, or whatever it is, and believe that it is possible. When I looked at this house and I was like, oh, I believe I can actually move in earlier. There's gotta be a way. I believe that there was a possibility there. And I wasn't trying to figure it out from my ego's perspective. I was allowing different things to actually happen. So living in the end is about knowing that what you can do is you don't have to wait till your outer circumstances appears a certain way so then you feel it. If you first feel it and you live in it with your vision, you then bring other parts of that into your life. And this is something that you do, when you begin to do it, you begin to get more and more synchronicity, more and more momentum, and understand that there'll be times that you're in this process that maybe you feel like, hey, things aren't going the way that I thought they were supposed to go. When you live in the end, here's the thing. When you live in the end, you don't wait for the mirror to change in reality. You realize it's part of who you are. If you we wait, we know this analogy, you probably maybe heard me say it before, but if I looked in the mirror and was waiting for my reflection to change, I'd be waiting forever. But if instead I just change, regardless of what the mirror does, naturally the mirror reflection changes as well. 
With living in the end, what we can do is feel the emotions that we want to feel now by understanding that we already have it within our body to feel those. Think about it. And if you want more money, what do you really want? What is the emotion that money brings you? Is it security? Is it, is it freedom? And if those are, the, those are normally what it is for people, then could you already feel gratitude for the freedom and the abundance you already have? Because if you, and the abundance, uh, the freedom and the security you already have. Maybe you already have a house that you live in. You don't have to worry about the bare necessities like that. Maybe you have um, the freedom to do, to go eat somewhere today, to go out with your dog, whatever it is. When you are gratitude, gratitude unifies you with this reality. And what you do, when you then feel that emotion and, and, and focus on it, whatever you focus on, you feel, you then bring more of that into your life. So if you want to create the bridge between this reality and this reality, the key to that is understanding that the emotions you feel in this reality already exist within you. And what you can do is visualize this person you would be. This person you would be. Understand as well what quantum potential shows us is that every probable version of us already exists. So if you through your vision can imagine this version of you and then just decide that's who I am now, then you will begin to be in that vibration. Some people call that act as if. I call it being as if. Because act as if implies that you're going to eventually change and not be acting anymore. You're going to go home for the day, put in your hat, and you're done acting. But in actuality, what's even more powerful is being as if. Understanding that's who you are now. Changing your identity. Seeing that self as that version of you. So that's something that I've begun learning in my own life is how to apply this. I'm now using it because I'm moving into doing live events. So what I'm doing is I'm imagining myself doing that, being that version of me. What would that version of me think, feel, smell, hear? How would I, uh, as I'm going to bed in the night or waking up in the morning, I'm visualizing what that is and how that feels, trying it on in a way. And the more that I do that, the more that I put myself in that vibrational frequency and the more, the more synchronicity I'm experiencing in my life. I've got like event, event planners, uh, connections. Now I've got, um, even crew there. I met some of the amazing people at Tony Robbins conference that were crew member. There's so like volunteers and they recognized me from my channel and they said, Oh, when you do an event, let me know. I would love to help set up for it. And I'm like, I have somebody that's like trained to do this. That's, it's just amazing. The synchronicity that happens when you believe in your vision and you just decide that's who you are now. That's more of an identity change than it is just something that you're trying to attract from over there to into here. Just be it. You can give yourself permission to be it now. And the more you, you are being it, the more that, that will experience, you'll experience that in your reality. And if you didn't know, there is a living in the end meditation that I just went live recently. You can go ahead and click it right here. Listen to that meditation for 21 days. Read the comments to see what's possible because then that increases your belief in it. And watch how your life begins to change. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace, much love, and namaste.